So um, today what I want to do is talk about, um, well first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm, my name is Doug Waite and um, I have a company uh, called Cool Iron Software actually. <coughs> my wife and I have a company called Cool Iron Software and um, we build iOS apps. We also do the uh, full stack. So I've done a lot of different things throughout my career and that's beneficial now when we serve um, clients that need you know, a complete project done. So, um, but along the way, I've always been fascinated with uh, talking to small devices, you know, having my phone uh, control this piece of hardware over here or get data from another piece of hardware. And um, one of the ways you can do that is with Bluetooth. And with the introduction of uh, core Bluetooth back yeah, many revs ago, the uh, iPhone 4S, I think, was the first uh, device with uh, Bluetooth low energy on it. Anyway, that that um, prompted me to learn all this stuff, and uh, I'm going to see if I can share what I know about core Bluetooth and interfacing with these devices, which is not everything, uh, as you'll see, but, but it should get you enough um, so that you'd be proficient and be able to create your own uh, apps. So I haven't published anything yet on this uh, GitHub site, but these will be in the slides, and um, that site is public right now, but it's empty. Um, after the presentation, I'll put something up there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Bluetooth in general. This is really boring stuff, but it's stuff you need to know if you're going to be able to create anything um, novel. Um, so we'll do that. We'll go through some of the specs that are related to the heart rate monitor, and um, this will give you the background in, in looking at core Bluetooth specs, which is important if you want to interface with some different core Bluetooth or, or some different uh, Bluetooth peripheral. And then I'm going to go into the iOS APIs for Bluetooth, which um, is core Bluetooth. And along the way, we're going to build a demo application. So. So Bluetooth um, is uh, promoted, managed. It, it's a you know it's a specification radio specification um, managed by the Bluetooth SIG, and uh, they they create a lot of different standards. It's a huge standards body. Uh, Bluetooth 4.2 is the latest thing they've got out, um, and it is along the line of the Bluetooth low energy specifications. So. The old Bluetooth that you use, like for um, in your car for audio and for your, you know, phone voice and all that stuff, that's called Bluetooth Classic, or Bluetooth EDR and enhanced data rate, <coughs> data rate. Um, low energy came along back, I guess, around 2011, maybe 2010, <clears throat> and it's low energy because it. Um, sends very small data packets, and, and the idea was that you'd send these little bits of data, and that would keep the radio off um, most of the time, and so you wouldn't be using your radio as much, and it would extend battery life. Um, you'll hear a couple other terms like smart, Bluetooth smart, so you'll hear Bluetooth 4, which is the spec, uh, Bluetooth low energy, which is the, the way they refer to it throughout most of the um, Bluetooth SIG, and then Bluetooth Smart is kind of their marketing brand. These are all sort of the same thing. Um, there are also a bunch of um, acronyms that talk about the protocol stack. I'm not going to spend any time on this right now except to say that um, these uh, GAT, the generic attribute profiles, is where you're going to spend most of your time trying to understand the device that you're going to interface with. So in general, when when you've got a um, something like a like a heart rate monitor here, this is a little. I don't have the strap on it, but you know this is a little um, polar um, H7 Bluetooth low energy heart rate monitor. Um, you've got that, and then you've got your iOS device. And the way this works is the I, um, this thing begins advertising when you activate it. It starts sending out advertising packets. And you fire up your um, iPhone and you, you turn on your app that's going to connect to it. 
and it starts scanning for devices that are advertising. And when it discovers um, the device it's looking for, it connects to it. Um, and then when you, you know, when you take the heart rate strap off and it um, goes to sleep or it, or it terminates, then that, that connection will be terminated. You could also terminate the connection from the, um, from the iOS device. The, actually, I'm going to come back to that slide in a second. Well, yeah, let's just talk about this real briefly. So, Internet of Things, um, you know, that's, that's a hot topic right now. So I wanted to point out, at least, how Bluetooth plays in that world. Um, and if you look at this diagram, this kind of shows, I've actually got all these things in my house. So, or in my car, right? And so, um, the, the, the sleep number bed, for example, uses Bluetooth to configure the, the network stack. And then it begins communicating through your home router, out to the <coughs> internet, and then ultimately to um, some server in the internet where all that data gets captured. Um, I've got a thing in my car called an automatic ODB2 adapter, and that's interfacing with the, um, the, the thing in the vehicle that they use for emissions inspections, and it pulls all sorts of data off the car, um, sends it through Bluetooth to my phone, and then my phone communicates up to the cloud. Um, so, Bluetooth plays a role in the Internet of Things, and when you really start looking at, at IoT, um, there are all sorts of radios out there that are going to play a part in this. Um, and ultimately, it's just that we've got all these smart devices now that can communicate with each other and can communicate up over the um, network to the cloud. Uh, so, you know, while Bluetooth, at least um, 4.2 Bluetooth, They've introduced uh, TCP over Bluetooth, but I think that still goes through your your phone. Uh, but generally, you're gonna you're gonna see that the apps on the phone are going to be talking to a Bluetooth device and then sending data up to the cloud. That's kind of how Bluetooth plays into the IoT. Um, so a couple of some terminology to understand. Uh, your in, in Bluetooth low energy land, we talk about um, centrals and peripherals. And the, the central, in my example, is going to be the, the iOS device. It'll be playing the part of the central, and the peripheral will be the heart rate monitor. Um, the peripheral is advertising, and the central is scanning and connecting. So that's just, you know, basically how that works. The, the peripheral advertises a set of services, and then for each service you can have characteristics. Um, so in the heart rate monitor, you might have a, a heart rate measurement service and a device information service, for example, and then the heart rate measurement service will have um, a heart rate as a heart rate measurement as a characteristic. What we're not going to talk about are um, control points, which is a way that a central can write to a peripheral and update data in the peripheral. I'm not going to show you that or discuss that much today. Um, background mode, I'm not going to cover um, multiple central managers. I'm not going to talk about um, saving and device saving devices and restoring them. That's you know when your when your um, app goes. Uh, in the background, or when your user kills your app, you know, in, in the real world, you're going to want to have saved the device, and then you're going to want to restore that connection when the user goes out for their run again, or, or whatever it is they're doing. Um, but that's a little bit more involved than I can cover in th this length of talk. Uh, and then the iOS device now, in the original core Bluetooth, um, APIs, you couldn't do this, but now you can set up your iOS device as a peripheral. So you can actually have, um, you know, two iPhones communicating with each other over core Bluetooth, which is pretty cool. But we don't, <laughs> again, I probably won't go into that. This is kind of core Bluetooth 101. So um, here are the specifications. When you look at the Bluetooth SIG, they're going to talk about profiles, services, and characteristics. And the profile 
um, describes a collection of services that go together. And then each service um, will talk about, the specification for the service is going to talk about uh, characteristics. So, you know, earlier we were talking about the uh, 64, the magic number. There are plenty of magic numbers when you start looking at Bluetooth. And, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so here are some of the actual magic numbers for the heart rate service. 180D is a 16-bit UUID in, in Bluetooth terms um, that, that is the number that has been assigned to the heart rate service. Uh, and then those are the numbers, the heart rate measurement and the body sensor location characteristics. Those are two of the characteristics um, and their assigned numbers. And then the heart rate control point is an optional characteristic. So some characteristics are mandatory, some are optional. Um, and then the services have names to go along with their magic numbers. Um, and these are the names for the uh, heart rate service and the device information service. And, and in the in the heart rate profile, these things are both mandatory. So you can't really say that I've got I've got a conformant heart rate device um, unless it implements both of these services. And then for the heart rate service, the uh, you know some of the characteristics are mandatory and some are optional. Uh, and these are the these are the service characteristics for the heart rate service. Just to be clear on this, yes, there could be several devices from different manufacturers that are uh, part of this heart rate service. Yeah, all use the same numbers. Exactly. So my app could work. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point of the um, Six Spec is that you can build an app that will talk to and, and the demo that I built will talk to any. Um, compliant or conformant heart rate um, monitor, you know, heart rate sensor. Uh, so yeah, this is a tough talk right after lunch. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Specs, it's awesome. Uh, then there's what I call speckless. That's not an official term, so don't quote me on that. But um, but if if you are a device manufacturer and you've got something really cool that the Bluetooth SIG has not standardized yet. You can just say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to implement this, and um, I'm going to assign it my own number. Now, when you do that, you assign it a 128-bit UUID. You can't give it a 16-bit UUID um, because those would potentially collide. You know, it's a fairly small namespace, and they would potentially collide with the UUIDs that the SIG is standardizing on. Um, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of manufacturers in the Bluetooth space are building things that aren't really related to anything the Bluetooth SIG is standardizing. And that's where you're going to find that they've, um, they just create their own uh, service names and their own service UUIDs and their own characteristics and characteristic UUIDs. Uh, the, the core Bluetooth, of course, will talk to these things. You just have to know uh, what's in them. So that's, that's kind of the secret. Do you have a device that will have a spec, a heart rate spec, and then in addition have a spec that's speckless? Exactly, yes, you can. In fact, I'll show you that. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and yeah, typically these vendors are going to do um, one of three things, which is they're going to, they're not going to give you access to their speckless, their, their proprietary um, data. Or they're going to um, allow you to access it via REST. They could publish the specification and let you use native core Bluetooth to, to um, get to it, but typically they don't. And, and then a lot of them, like Wahoo Fitness, uh, who I worked for for a little while, um, publishes an SDK. So they, you know, so then you bring in their APIs and they interface it that way. But I haven't seen any actually that have published uh, their own spec. You know. um, okay. So here's here's what you'd really like to have happen. Um, you know, when I first started looking at this stuff, I thought, well, great, I've got a heart rate monitor. I'll um, I'll just fire up an app. I'll build an app and have it go out and and talk to my heart rate monitor and get my heart rate. You know. 
That makes sense. Seems like I should be able to do that. But um, in reality, you've got all these objects. I forgot that this slide builds, but uh, <laughs> but you're uh, but you've got a bunch of you've got a bunch of objects that you need to take into account. And, and since the core Bluetooth um, framework allows you to speak to anything, including these speckless devices, it has to accommodate everything. So, um, so the APIs really aren't that simple. So this is really the way I look at it now. Um, you've got essentially 13 <coughs> steps that you go through to, to pull a heart rate. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and what we're going to do with the demo app is we're going to we're going to walk. I'm going to add code incrementally for each of these steps, and we're going to talk about it. And um, yeah. Yes. Yes, it is, and that's a good point. So pairing is a different thing entirely. So this um, core Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth low energy um, typically doesn't have pairing. I think they may have introduced pairing for this in the 4.2 spec um, or the 4.1 spec, but core Bluetooth doesn't support that. So pairing is something that's traditionally done with the EDR or the, the classic, Bluetooth classic. Um, you can kind of simulate pairing, and I'll talk about that later, but, um, but ultimately it's not the same as the old. So yeah, a lot of steps here, um, and I guess you know I, I could have combined some of these, but it, you know, I could have said, well, you discover and connect, or and, and I'll do that in the demo, but um, yeah. So it looks like according to my slide deck, it's demo time. So let's go ahead and start that. Um, what I'm doing, you know, live code demos, um, again, we've had some folks talk about this. They're kind of tricky, and I've done this a few different ways. We don't have a whole lot of time, so what I'm going to do today is I've got a, um, a Git repository where I've committed for each step of the um, process, and, and this is the repo I'll publish. Um, so I'm just going to swap out the code. From underneath Xcode, which actually now seems to work, um, <laughs> and um, along the way, you know, we'll build it up and we'll talk about it. So you start out with just a standard project. There's really nothing special about this project right now, and this is just a, a standard view controller, except that I have um, I have a UI, and that UI, you know, has a, a few labels on it. And then I've got an app state that I've created here. Um, can you guys see this okay? Is it? Okay. Got an app state. And, the, and you've probably noticed by now this is all in Swift. Um, and then, you know, as my state changes, I'm going to update the user interface. But there's no core Bluetooth code in here right now. So let's go ahead and pop in the first uh, bit of core Bluetooth. Detached head? No. Um, okay, so the first thing it did is it added the um, core Bluetooth import, so we'll be bringing that framework. And then um, step one, and I'm sure you all memorized the diagram, so you'll know that step one was um, starting up the CB Central Manager. So you've got to make sure you've got core Bluetooth up and running. And when you do that, um, when the Bluetooth radios are ready, and when the operating system has everything set up, it's going to call your delegate, and it's going to call it with um, central manager did update state. So <coughs> I think that's all pretty straightforward. You, you pass the central manager a delegate, you pass it a queue, which would be a dispatch queue if you didn't want to run everything on the main queue, which you probably wouldn't, but for this demo, I am. Um, and then some options, uh, and I'm only passing in one option right now, which is um, to tell it to that if the user turns off the um, power to Bluetooth, if they disable Bluetooth, it'll pop up an alert automatically for you. Um, and let's try to 
let's try to run this on the simulator first. Because that's really fast and we like working in the simulator. Uh, oh, it's big. It's really big. That's anyway, what I wanted to show you there was that you really can't run it in the simulator. So I'll just tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no way to use um, core Bluetooth and, and do core Bluetooth development without a device that's actually Bluetooth capable. They used to allow you to plug in a dongle, and um, the team, the core Bluetooth team, got so tired of supporting all the different dongles that they nixed that approach. So now what we're going to do, I've got a, um, I've got a, little iPod Touch, fifth generation iPod Touch. And it um, does support core Bluetooth, so we can use it. Let's just make sure that's working properly. There's some real standard things in this code that are, you know, anybody can figure out from looking at the docs, and then there's some trickier sections. So I'm going to try and <clears throat> kind of hustle through to get to the trickier sections. So this changed our state to five, and for some reason it didn't update the state in my UI. Okay, so we're going to go on to step three. Okay. Yeah. So step three, I've got um, set up scanning, and, and we're going to look at the um, state of the central manager. So when you get that callback, after you start up the central manager, you get a callback, and that callback is going to return a state of unknown, resetting, unsupported, unauthorized, powered off, or powered on. And if you see powered on, that's your green light to go ahead and, and start interacting with the device. So um, let's make sure that we're getting that powered on. There we go. Okay. And it says we're scanning, so that's that's good news. Uh, anybody have any questions up to this point? Is this all pretty clear? Okay. Yeah. It would be, yeah, it would be entirely different. So you could, um, you know, the, the health kit, the, the phone can connect to your um, heart rate device, um, and your watch can connect to your heart rate sensor, but all that stuff would get fed into health kit directly, and then you would write an app that would access health kit. Um, yeah, so that is a different, that is a different scenario. So now we're going to go off and discover the uh, peripheral. So now I've added in step four. So we, we started our scanning, and the result of scanning, we hope, is going to be um, that we're going to discover a peripheral. Oh, and one thing I failed to mention in the uh, scanning is this. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm telling it which... Um, things I'm scanning for. So I'm going to be scanning for peripherals that offer a heart rate service. Uh, and if they don't offer a heart rate service, then uh, I don't want to hear about it. You could pass in a nil to um, scan peripherals, scan for peripherals with services, and it would scan for everything. And if you do this, you're going to run your battery down um, and you're going to find a lot of devices that you don't care about. So, um, you know, the recommendation is not to use nil when scanning. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And I'll show you, well, this is as good a time as any to go into the, um, the UUIDs and the way that's set up, the way I've, I've set that up with um, SWIFT 2. So. Is that how we monitor? Advertising this whole it is. Yeah, this thing is going to advertise 
until it either goes to sleep or it um, connects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we may find that when I try to show you connecting, it doesn't connect because it's gone to sleep. I've been wearing it for a while, and um, I'll wake it up if that's the case. Um, <clears throat> so the UUIDs need to be, you need to take your number um, and convert it to a core Bluetooth UUID, which is what we've got right here. So the way I'm doing that is I've got an enum that is of type string and or, or uses string as its representation. And I've, I've assigned the heart rate service, the um, UUID, and the device information service, and another service called running speed and cadence. Um, and then I've created a couple of static functions that will convert these uh, strings to core Bluetooth UUIDs. Uh, one of them just returns, takes a single UUID and converts it, and the other one takes a list. Because a lot of the, a lot of the methods in core Bluetooth take an array of uh, UUIDs. So, so if we look back here again, you can see that um, right here, the service UUID is, that's my static function and I'm passing it an array of enums um, where it will with just one value at this point. So I'm just looking for the, I'm just going to be scanning for the heart rate service, nothing else. Um, I could, you know, pass more service UUIDs into that scan call. So if that scan succeeds, it's going to find a peripheral and uh, call my delegate. And it, again, this is all in, this is the massive view controller, right? So everything is in one view controller, but that was really the simplest way to um, create a demo. All right, so let me go ahead and start this up, and we'll see if we get our, our call back. It's scanning, it's not finding anything. <coughs> So that's because my heart rate monitor is going to sleep, probably. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yep. So the name of this um, this heart rate sensor is a ticker X, and this ticker X um, you can see offers and this is all the way over on that side of the screen. It offers um, a heart rate service, and um, Apple's been kind enough to convert the uh, UUID to a, a string for us in the debug statement. Um, it offers a service of 1814, and we could look that up in the Bluetooth SIG, and I think we find that that's a um, running speed and cadence. I believe that's running speed and cadence, and it offers uh, cycling speed and cadence, and then it offers a uh, proprietary. So this is one of those proprietary. Um, UUIDs is A026, EE04, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's another service. I don't know what that service is. It could be their firmware update service. Um, yeah. So that's an example of a peripheral that offers a whole bunch of services. And this thing has um, accelerometers on it. So that service could be feeding me accelerometer data. You also get an RSSI, which is the signal strength, along with the, the uh, callback. And you can see back over here uh, with our discovered peripheral, we get the advertisement data as a um, uh, dictionary, essentially. So a, a map of um, strings to any objects. And then we get the RSSI value. So uh, the advertisement data I printed out in a debug statement, so you can see that down here. So um, when you start debugging, you'll see 
the, they've got pretty good information for you. Uh, so if you just include the CB peripheral in a print statement like I did here on line uh, 106, you get um, a good bit of information. One of the things you get is this identifier. And the identifier, uh, Apple seems to be a little um, uncertain about what to do with this. They, they used to give you a, a true UUID. So this peripheral has a unique identifier that's assigned by the manufacturer. And they used to expose that to you. But for privacy reasons, they stopped doing that. And now they give you um, kind of a made-up identifier that they've, they've assigned to it. That identifier can change over time. So when the user, you know, upgrades their operating system, if they delete your app and reinstall it, um, that UUID or that identifier can change. So the other thing I want you to notice is that most manufacturers in the name, and you can see it every place I've got the name, I guess over there, if you see ticker XC23F. So Wahoo put that C23F in there to bring uniqueness to that name. It used to be that you didn't have to do that when you could really get a unique UUID that was, that was um, consistent. But since that's not consistent, when you want to reconnect to this device, you uh, might need that. So if someone else had that same hardware in your pocket, it would be a whole better It would. It would, yeah. They want to sign that same code to two devices. Um, and that's because they need to be able to reconnect to it if you, um, it, they need some consistent identifier that they can always know and, and recognize that device by. And, and um, originally in Core Bluetooth, you could use the UUID, and then the Apple said, oh, that's a privacy problem, because we're all walking around giving off these huge radio fingerprints. Um, <laughs> you still have a unique identifier that yeah, because you have to have it or your app won't, won't work right. Because then the user would, if, if that identifier changed, and um, I pull out my phone and I go running with it, and all of a sudden I get to the end of my run, I'm like, man, I haven't recorded any data. That's because I, it didn't reconnect. Um, but you want to always reconnect. So that's um, discovering... Yeah, I'm looking to see if there's anything I really want to point out here. That's discovering the uh, peripheral. And I've got a note in here, and this is um, just to show you using that name. So this is using the peripheral name to try and make sure if I have to rescan um, and I'm trying to reconnect to the same peripheral, you might have some logic that looks like this in your, in your production code. And I'm... I'm going to hang on to the um, peripheral in my class, uh, although I, that, that's more interesting, I guess, if you have multiple peripherals you're talking to. But, all right, so let's go on to the next step. So now we've discovered the peripheral, we're going to connect to it. Step four, step five, um, connect peripheral. And you pass it the peripheral and then um, some connection options. And I'm going to update my, my state along the way so that my UI will update properly. And step six, so this is where I said, you know, I kind of, I said 13 steps, you could view it differently. You know, you could say that step five and six are kind of the two sides of the same thing because one is issuing the connect request on the peripheral and the other is getting the um, delegate callback, um, which is central manager did connect peripheral. So let's go ahead and run this. Scanning again, it's not getting anywhere. Which probably means, you know, the device is pretty aggressive about going to sleep. Um, to save battery life. Let's see if we can get it. Huh. 
The other thing to know, yeah, <laughs> I appear to be dead. I'm dead on stage. All right, let's see. Just to keep it moving, I'll connect to this one. All right, this is connecting. It's a little trick if you've got these heart rate monitors, you can um, kind of rub the two contacts and it'll wake it up and you can connect to it. So, yeah. So let's see what happened here. We connected. Oh, and interestingly, we didn't get a um, we didn't get a manufacturer's name or a local name, which is really odd. Never actually seen that before. That's the beauty of demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's not. I don't think this is a a bug in my code. I think it's actually a, a bug in the could be a bug in the device. One of the things to know when you're testing these things and things don't work. Um, I, I'm typically questioning my code, right? If something doesn't work, I always assume first that I've done something wrong. But as I started working with these Bluetooth devices and understood a little bit more about radios and all the things that can happen here, um, I now am a little bit more, I, I go to the other alternative a little bit more quickly. Um, and in this case, I don't think there is anything off in the code. Anyway, we did connect and we saw something I've never seen before, so that was interesting. Um, so now, after, <clears throat> after we've connected, okay, so there's this whole series of, of um, discover, do something, discover, do something. And what we did first is we discovered the device, the peripheral, and then we connected. And the next thing we've got to do is discover the services that are offered by that peripheral. And so that's what um, step seven and eight are going to do for us. So here, um, and again, this is pretty straightforward. We call discover services. And just like with scanning, we want to tell it which services we're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to look for a heart rate service and a device information service. The demo code doesn't actually do anything with the device information, but um, I just wanted to demonstrate the um, pulling up two services. Um, and the callback, yeah? Is that an and or an or that results in the That's an or. That's an or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you'll, you'll find any peripheral that you've connected to that is offering either of those services or both. And then for each service it, it discovers, you're going to, as it, as it discovers services, you're going to get this callback. Um, it discovers services, and then you will be able to query the peripheral for the services that it has returned. So that's what I'm doing here in the um, delegate callback. <clears throat> and I'm thanks to you know Swift, I can switch on the um, UUID of that service, and I've got my my handy UUID creation method, taking my enum and um, converting it to a CPU UUID. So that that made this code a lot more readable than it was in Objective C. It's just you know it's just really nice. So that's step eight. And I'm going to go ahead and spread that up. Let me see if I can get this thing done. There we go. This particular heart rate monitor has a feature. Uh, no, I'm not running it yet. I wanted to see if I could get it to um, see if I could revive it. It could be the battery's dead, too. That's the other thing that tends to happen. Okay, we got it. All right, so um, we discovered the heart rate service and we discovered the device information service. So I've got a lot of debug in the in the demo, you know, that you wouldn't normally have in a 
regular um, app. But that's good. So I'm going to keep this keep going here. Any, um, is this still making sense right now? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to do characteristics discovery. So this is why the process is so uh, drawn out, because you're, like I said, you're, you're discovering something, discovering something else. Um, so steps nine and ten, uh, peripheral did discover characteristics. So I'm going to ask it to discover um, the heart rate measurement characteristic and the body central location characteristic for a, a particular service. So that's um, the next step in the process. And then uh, the peripheral, we're now we're now working with um, CB peripheral delegate methods. So the view controller is implementing two uh, delegate protocols, the CB peripheral and the CB central manager delegate. So here we're going to go ahead and um, get our callback that we did discover the characteristics. And those come back as an array of uh, characteristics. And then I'm going to go through and I'm looking for um, one characteristic in particular, which is the heart rate characteristic and the heart rate um, heart rate measurement characteristic. And it should have a uh, property of notify. So characteristics can either be read once or they can um, notify your delegate every time they change. And for a heart rate sensor, you want it to do the latter. You want to notify every time the heart rate changes. So um, that's the way this one is set up. And that's one of the properties you can check. So a characteristic is going to have properties, um, one of which can be notified. So if it's, if it's notified capable, then everything is good. And the, the spec does say that it should be um, capable of being notified. Okay, and we got it. We got our debug down here that the heart rate measurement characteristic is notified capable. So if it, if it weren't, then this uh, heart rate sensor wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be meeting the Bluetooth spec. So now I'm going to turn on notify. <clears throat> and, you know, this should be it, right? I'm, I'm going to get my um, value. So right here on the peripheral for this uh, characteristic that we just retrieved, I'm going to tell it to start notifying me of uh, any change in the value. And so <clears throat> I, I remember being at a WWDC and I was playing with this stuff and I was at a Bluetooth um, talk, and they were going through with a heart rate sensor, and I'd kind of done all this, and I had a heart rate sensor with me, and um, I thought, all right, now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get my heart rate back. I'm going to turn on notify, and we're going to see what the heart rate is. And I started seeing this. <laughs> you know, 16.5F9CO2. <laughs> I thought, Crap, there's something they didn't tell me. <laughs> what did they not tell me? Um, so that's what I now I now call step 13, <clears throat> which is decoding the heart rate back. Uh, but but you can see here it's just you know it's notifying me every second. And that's all good, but I, it's not something I can I can do anything with. And if you look. Um, that value is coming through. It's a um, it's an NS data object, which in, in Swift is going to be a um, unsafe pointer boy type, right? Very useful. Very useful. So let's see. I'm going to take a slight detour here and take us over to. Um, I don't know if you can read this at all, but 
this is the uh, this is the Bluetooth specs. So this is the secret that Apple didn't share with me. <clears throat> um, and they've got a whole bunch of these specs, and this is where you can learn what all the bits mean. Um, so now we're going to get into something that's pretty low level, where we're going to be parsing bits. Yep. All right, I'm running out of time. Let's see. So let's see here. Okay, so now let's see. Let me go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll bring up the heart rate. Uh, and then I'll walk you through the code, <laughs> the decodes the heart rate, which was actually pretty interesting this way. So what I added here was this uh, render heart rate method, which you know, looks like a, oh, there we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> Does this count as exercise? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this is decoding my heart rate, and this is actually just the, the render method that I created. Nothing too exciting there, except you'll see that I'm, um, I've created a, Class, and I guess that could have been a struct, but um, I've created a class called heart rate measurement that. Oh, it is a struct. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about this actually. Um, so I'm not going to take you through the spec, but what the spec tells me is that the first byte of the NS data value coming back is a um, set of flags. And then following the flags, and depending on one of the flags, I'm either going to have a 16-bit heart rate value or I'm going to have an 8-bit heart rate value. And then following that heart rate value, I might have an energy expended value, which would be a 16-bit unsigned integer. Um, and then following that, uh, that, that was the energy expended is optional. And then so are the RR intervals. RR intervals are the uh, space between I think like the two peaks in your heart rate, um, and and those I'll have zero or more of those. So so you can see I've got um, data coming in here. I'm just going to stop that distracting thing. Um, I've got data coming in in the in a state object in, in basically a byte stream, right? So I've got to parse that thing. So one of the things they introduced in Swift too, which is really cool, is the option set type. Um, so the option set type allowed me to go in and create my uh, bit values. Uh, so, you know, following the spec, um, and these things are uh, from, from least significant to most significant, right? So um, this is bit zero over here on the right, and I just used uh, binary literals. You know, in, in the objective C code, I'm doing all kinds of bit shifting and all the old school stuff. But um, in this one, I was able to do it really cleanly, and, and you can just map it directly into the spec. It's real nice without having to go through all that binary math in your head. Um, so it has the flags have uh, tell me what size my heart rate value is. They tell me what features are supported, um, like in contact or not in contact. Um, energy expended and R interval present. So this is the code that, that actually decodes the whole bit stream. Um, and in here, I go through and uh, create, well actually those are getters that I put on the, on the struct to help me uh, make it more readable. Uh, but yeah, down here. So this first method, get flags. Let's take a look at that. Uh, it just pulls the heart rate flags. So that's initializing that enum with the um, eight bits, the first eight bits of that data stream. This is what really 
bothers me where I where I need help. I think is um, so. Any any of you Swift two experts or Swift experts? Uh, this this function get eight, and I've got two others: get sixteen with a void unsafe void pointer and get sixteen with an unsafe pointer uint sixteen. This thing is using the only way I found to do this was to use an unsafe bit cast, which is a uh, Swift uh, standard library function, and let me show you what they say about that. So, unsafe bit cast um, breaks the guarantees of Swift's type system. <laughs> Warning, uh, there's almost always a better way to do anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. So that made me feel really good about what I was doing here. Um, <laughs> but I'm still looking for that better way. Because I couldn't figure out how to cast an unsafe void pointer to anything useful. Um, so that's that's just a still an open question in my mind is you know, Apple's telling me I shouldn't be doing this, uh, but they do have the function, mind you, in the in the SDK, um, and I and it is public, uh, so I haven't done anything, you know, with private functions. But anyway, this thing allows me to get the um, next eight bits off the off that data stream, and it casts it to a, a uint, an unsafe pointer to a uint eight, and then I take that um, first byte, and I I get my um, uint eight. Uh, so the rest of this code is kind of the same stuff as far as decoding the um, heart rate value. Yeah, so that's really that's really the bulk of the code. Um, anybody have any uh, questions? Was that did that make sense to you guys? Okay. Okay. I hope I didn't drag it out too long for you, but, um, but anyway. You don't have any questions on that. Let's just go back to this real quickly. So, you know, what could go wrong with this? What's the, one of the best things about your iPhone? Yeah, you may or may not agree with this, but I think it's um, battery life. And what can you really mess up with Bluetooth is battery life. So you, you want to be careful about how you manage um, battery life through your use of Bluetooth. You don't want to scan too often. Um, improper use can really be tough on the battery. So look specifically for the services you're after. Um, once you find what you're looking for, stop scanning. Um, I didn't highlight that in the code, but I do that. I stop scanning once I find it. Um, and let the framework filter out duplicate advertising data. You could use this thing. You could write a program that would use the um, signal strength as a proximity indicator, but to do that, you'd have to turn on the flag that says, go ahead and give me all the advertising data. Um, every time a device advertises, and these things are advertising really rapidly, um, and that'll burn up your battery. Um, so subscribe when appropriate. We, we did that with the heart rate. Uh, and then disconnect when you're done. So that's... Yeah, I'm going to skip the, since we're out of time, I'm going to skip the discussion on reconnection. But um, they've got some really good documentation on reconnection in the Apple Core Bluetooth Guide, and I suggest you uh, go through that carefully. Make sure you understand it if you're going to do this stuff. Um, yeah, so testing, <clears throat> when it quits working, um, it might be your code or it might be the device. It might be it's going to sleep. It might be the battery's dead. So check all that stuff out. There's a thing called a, a Faraday bag. This is a Faraday bag. And it um, isolates radio signals. So I don't know if we've got any electrical engineers in here, but um, if we do, you probably might have played with a Faraday cage. Uh, <laughs> we had a Faraday cage in the office. I was told not to try to get myself on the Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah.
Yeah, and apparently these things are popular with the police, too, because I bought this one um, on eBay, and it came with a bunch of evidence bags. Uh, you know, evidence uh, <laughs> notes. So, But anyway, once you put anything you put in here, the radio signals are squashed. And that's real handy if you're trying to test for disconnects and things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn the microwave on. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You can you can use a microwave. Yeah, just yeah. Make sure you don't turn it on with your iPhone in it. Yeah. Um, and the environment it has a huge impact on the radio signal. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, so you always want to be aware of that and, and test in different scenarios uh, because it might work really well indoors. These things typically work well because there's a lot of reflective surfaces and the radio signals are reflecting off these things. But you can take it outside, and you might not be connecting as well as you think you are. Um, there's a company called Punch Through Designs that creates a little app called Light Blue, and I'll show you that real quickly. This thing's real handy for um, testing because it finds all the peripherals nearby. So we've got a whole bunch of um, Bluetooth peripherals in the room. Somebody's got a Pogo Connect. We've got a oh, Tigger X, yeah. We've got um, some some health conscious people with Fitbits on. That's how you find lost Fitbits in the South. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. That's right, yeah. Looking at the signal strength, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Can you tell them these Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing to remember about all this Bluetooth stuff is it's not, there's not a lot of privacy with this Bluetooth LE. Um, so these devices are all advertising all the time? Yeah, when they're not connected to something. Typically the device will quit advertising when it connects. It doesn't have to, though, but, but typically it will. Um, so yeah, they've been advertising. This one's advertised. Um, so it's a, you know, you can see the local name is um, one, and the, uh, I don't know if we saw the manufacturer on here. Let's see, it should be in here somewhere. But so if they're advertising all the time, could you run other people's batteries down just by walking around with an iPhone that's, that's querying all this information? Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, potentially you, you could have an impact. You could have an impact, yeah. Um, and the other cool thing, yes, yeah, so there's our manufacturer string. And battery life is frequently wrong, battery level. Um, on these little devices. And you can see this one says 0%, but that's probably not right. Yeah, but it sends me an email and tells me if it's low. low, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this app is pretty cool, and you can clone a peripheral with it, and then it'll mimic that peripheral, uh, which is kind of nice. But yeah, I think that's all I wanted to show you. Um, so yeah, and then here's some resources. The Bluetooth core programming guide is actually pretty good. The core Bluetooth is, you know, it's not very exciting reading, but if you're going to interface with a Bluetooth device, it's recommended reading. The um, two WWDC sessions are very good, uh, but recently, you know, Apple hasn't shown a lot of love to core Bluetooth. Um, so there hasn't been a whole lot going on there. And then the SIG docs. Oh, these are very exciting reading. So. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but, yeah, you, you need to know that stuff. So. And that's it. Any uh, questions? Yeah. So I, I think I'm going to when you were showing your heart rate up there. It, it appeared that the, he was refreshing at the same rate that in your heart rate was. Does that mean that the device is communicating, or is it, is it communicating at a regular interval? So it's communicating at a regular interval. Okay, it is. Yeah, it was one second. Okay, so that just yep. happened to okay. Yeah, it just so looked, looked so that way. That makes sense. I would be surprised if the radio was communicating the change to the same time. But you could deduce the heart rate just from the radio. You could, yeah. But yeah. That makes more sense that it's, uh, it's always going to be. Oh, um, yeah, I've got two extra. So, well, DJ Wait, at DJ Wait, yep. And then um, at Cool Iron Software 
Or cool iron soft, yeah, because software is too long. Um, yep. So, cool iron soft. Here, I can show you the. So yeah, and there's contact information. But um, anyway, it's it's interesting stuff if you're into it, uh, and. I hope you guys will go off and connect to Bluetooth devices now. Fear not.